Anime begins with a rumbling felt across the city, a flashback shows Yuno becoming friends with Lucelles, Lucelles requests Yuno to teach her force arts, the two live in Nagan Labyrinth City which was built at the center of the Great Labyrinth of Kayazuna, the scene switches to a few warriors taking down a golem. Yuno and Lucelles dream of a future together assuming the true demon king is dead. Returning to the present time Yuno watches helplessly as the golem rips Lucelles limb by limb before chasing Yuno, she makes a run from the golem but ends up getting cornered, she uses her force arts to take down the golem and regrets not using it to save Lucelles. Just then multiple golems approach her from all directions, she attempts to attack them but is unable to and accepts her fate, just then there's a flash taking out all the robots in a swift move. It is revealed that Sujuru has slashed through all of them with his sword. Sujuru reveals his plans to take down the Great Labyrinth itself using only his sword. He offers to take it down in exchange for a meal and takes off to fight the Labyrinth and encounters multiple golems chasing him. He skillfully slashes them down. The Labyrinth tries to fight back but Sujuru dodges the attacks and begins climbing it. The labyrinth retaliates by engaging defensive cannons around the body and also deploys several other golems which Sujuru tackles midair, Sujuru launches himself in front of the labyrinth who takes the opportunity to fire a powerful light ray at him, Sujuru miraculously survives this and proceeds to slice off the labyrinth's head. With Sujuru on its shoulder the labyrinth unleashes a punch to its shoulder, the scene cuts to the demonstration of a technique to use the opponent's momentum against them, Cutting back to the scene Sujuru cuts off the swinging arm, causing it to hit the other shoulder with full force and ripping that arm away. With both the arms gone the labyrinth falls to the ground disabling the golems, Yuno questions why the great labyrinth began moving, she questions if it was Sujuru who resurrected it to slay it for fun, she harbors hostility towards the strong as it leads to the death of millions. Sujuru arrives and brags about killing the beast and Yuno offers him rations for his journey, she directs him towards Oriasia, claiming there are many great fighters there, internally she hopes someone there will teach him a lesson, Sujuru discovered that he and Yuno were not alone, as there was someone who was gathering life seals from the golems. It's revealed that after the demon king's death, the enemy of the world that filled the horizon with fear was defeated by someone, on that day that lone hero still remained unknown both in name and existence, after that the age of fear ended, and it's now the time to find out the real hero. The new principality in Lithia, a general named Terran has broken away from Oriasia the only minion kingdom, Terran declared independence for the regional city along the canal that she possessed, and then she named that place, the new principality of Lithia, this was also a serious military provocation that threatened Oriasia's control over the frontier. That day, Lana the Moon Tempest was scheduled to return to Lithia after being dispatched as a spy by Terran, but the group of wyverns is coming towards, she was coming in a horse carriage along with Higwer, there is also a skeleton who thinks whoever inside has the flesh will be eaten by those wyverns, however Higwer can eliminate all of them. Higwer believed Master Terran is the self-proclaimed Demon King, he isn't the true Demon King, on the other side the skeleton one is known as Shulk. The sound slicer, Higwer predicted that not only wyverns but also some outlaws are behind their cargo, and his prediction went true. But the group of wyverns attacked and brutally killed those outlaws. These are the trained wyverns coming from Lithia, after killing their outlaws they attacked wild wyverns too. But the leader of those trained wyverns, Regnaji used thermal arts and killed all of those wild wyverns, Regnaji is the lord of wyverns who protects the nation, nations use these wyverns for aerial warfare, it was Oriasia who planned this track. Oriasia the city that is ruled by the last minion queen, the total politics of the city controlled by 29 officials, later we see some officials discussing their failed attack on Lithia, they are planning for an assassination into Lithia, for this role they choose the 17th minister Elias squad, but they already have a spy there. They are talking about an old man named Hargant and make him out of this problem, they are planning to subdue the most powerful dragon, but Vikian the mighty powerful dragon gives a surprise attack on their base, the mighty dragon destroyed many minia champions, soon Hargant called his powerful ex-bow by magical arts. Unfortunately that was nothing to that dragon, but both of them became speechless after seeing a wyvern, he is a Uhlus the star runner. Ohlus was born with three upper limbs, Vikian literally went speechless after watching him, 
He went mad but can't compete with the speed of Uhlus. By using a shape-shifting craft arts he just killed down the mighty powerful giant dragon Vikian, later he comes down to praise Hargant but Vikian still not died yet and done a surprise attack again, after that Uhlus cut that giant dragon into two pieces by using the luminous blade. As the 29 officials of Oriasia are searching for a hero, they are gathering the strongest people from around the world, at this point Uhlus should come forward to partake with him in this competition, but Hargant doesn't want to use his strength to seize the glory. Uhlus understands his desire and he wants to give him the power of his as he deserves, but now he wants to go to the labyrinth city of Nagan to find something, so Uhlus is the one who's stealing the life seals of the robots. Back to the new principality of Lithia, Terran the guard of the city, she is so generous and nice to the people of the city, Terran having seen lots of battles and also belonging to the 29 officials of Oriasia, ranks as the 23rd general, she was an outstanding talent not just in literary and martial arts but also in politics. After the demon king died she declared independence from Oriasia, she possessed her own military force and is preparing for conflict with Oriasia, in the central citadel of Lithia she is ready for war with Oriasia and taking all preparations, in her cabin Dakai the magpie meets her, it's revealed that it was Dakai who stole the hearts of the robot demon earlier. He has taken a thing named the Cold Star and handed it over to Terran, the Cold Star is a magic item documented in records from before the era of the true Demon King, she thinks that the self-proclaimed Demon King Kayazuna had been using it to power up the Great Labyrinth, now after successfully completing the job Terran appointed Dakai to another job. For nearly two months from now merchant caravans going in and out of Lithia have come under attack, probably by outlaws sent from Oriasia, though Regnaji is protecting the skies of Lithia, if they successfully steal the cargo of Lithia then an army of wyverns can't help them, they are a really big problem for Lithia. Terran thinks someone must be leaking the information of Oriasia, so that's why the outlaws are attacking with full measure, Dakai's task is to find out who is actually leaking this information, Dakai started his work, at night he found out there are some merchants who must be involved in this conspiracy, these are actually Oriasia's secret service. Dakai is very fast and smooth, he defeated the shooters with his sword, Dakai doesn't think himself a swordsman, instead he is a bandit, so Dakai is an aberrant entity that cannot be tolerated in the distant world, a visitor that has flowed to this world. He is the one who can stop even the full speed of bullets in his consciousness and possesses remarkable eyesight and an enchanted sword, he can host the power of insight to conquer an impenetrable labyrinth alone, he can possess divine speed, he steals across the boundaries of his own world, he is a bandit, Minia and a magpie from the distant world. Elsewhere Regnaji is a lord of wyverns who protects Lithia from the sky, a Lithian citizen went missing a Minian child who is 9 years old, Regnaji thinks that one of his wyvern soldiers must know something, suddenly one wyvern spoke up, he said that it was Deputy Commander Lookwell of the Southern Guerrilla Unit, he had eaten that little child. It's an offensive crime for those wyverns because eating Lithian citizens means losing the trust of Terran the Guard, Lookwell went speechless after what he did, then Regnaji brutally killed him for his deeds, eating Lithian people could be sentenced to death. He ordered everyone not to break the rule next time, later Regnaji meets with Kurt. Kurt can't see but loves to write and likes to talk with Regnaji, Regnaji loves to listen to her singing so he requested her to do it. Kurt felt a bit hesitant but she started singing, and she has a beautiful voice, it's revealed that Kurt's mother is the monarch of Lithia, Regnaji alerted her that soon Lithia will face a war. Little Kurt believed that an angel also likes songs and word arts actually come from songs, in her opinion that angel is Regnaji, Regnaji rules the sky, he is a freely flying force who rules the vast skies alone, he is a command, a wyvern, he is Regnaji, the wings of sunset. Oriasia's central detention center, Lord Hiddo who got the information that their communication with secret service members had been stopped, he gets the information that from the east of the mage city headquarters there's a sunken ground which has been carved out by a stream, the people of Oriasia will come there for the attack to wyverns. Then they wake up Nihilo from the prison, Nihilo is a girl who single-handedly annihilated a whole regional army in Oriasia, according to the reports she is the most horrific bioweapon, elsewhere a woman named Elia the Red Tag who's Minya 17th minister. She is ambitious for her beauty and thinks that once her grandma told her beauty is a talent that is given by angels during people are born. 
But she adds that beauty is a combination of hard work which is required continuous maintenance. Eureka a elf girl and Elia began to bathe together, they also started to learn about word arts. According to Elia there are mainly four types of word arts, which are thermal arts, craft arts, force arts, and life arts. She teaches the young girl about the all arts, Elia is a beautiful woman and too much quiet, but she is also bearing some dark past, she has some other plan that's why she came into this village but hid it from Yuika. After bathing complete she met with Kia, Kia's word arts is very different from everything, Kia can control the life of earth, she took out the seed and evolved it into a big tree trunk, after meeting with Elia she turns back that big trunk into that small seed again, this village is full of elves, Yuika, Kia, and Tien too. Elia came as a professor and helped the child elves to learn about word arts. She assumed this false identity and secured a study abroad program in Oriasia for Kia. The purpose of this study is the imperial competition to determine the hero. Elia thinks that Kia is capable of beating any opponent. At the harvest festival Elia takes defensive measures that were taken while being mesmerized by the fervor and beauty of it all. While teaching them about forest plants, she sent all the detailed records of medical herbs to Oriasia by bird. She also investigated the secluded region where dense fog hinders human passage. A rumor from the era of the true demon king talks of a village where a certain individual has almighty word arts. She found the village's location from a captured Lithian soldier. After reaching the top of the mountain they noticed a dense fog there. Kia used her special word arts and cleaned the fog. After that everyone saw a beautiful view of nature. Seeing her impossible power Elia became speechless as she understood that Kia was capable of something big. Kia is the one who ignored all laws of nature possessing the power to warp anything in existence. She can surpass all nature and dominate the entire world with a single word. She is a wizard, an elf named Kia, the world word, later she headed towards to Oriasia with Elia. Back to Lithia where we see Terran talking with Shulk, the sound slicer and Higware, the pelagic, as Lana has successfully secured them and brought them to Lithia, as Terran is still trying to find Kia, the world word, it is still hard for her. Higware was born in the far west in a place unknown to the Minian races, he looked like a huge hall. A man kidnapped him and asked him to learn the use of the sword, Higware a trunk-like creature who fights with his twigs, the place where he stays the order is to kill or die, his opponent levels are increasing day by day but he is unstoppable as nobody can touch him. Kill or die is the only thing he learned, and the man who bought him earns money by using him in the fights, later that man sells him to another city, a giant, a shooter, nobody could defeat him, Higware turned into the strongest gladiator in the city, no one can defeat Higware, he just doesn't wish to die at any cost. One day the army of demon kind attacked the city, armies and soldiers are unable to fight with dead armies, but Higware stands still and started fighting, he started killing like a machine maniacally, so people saw him while slaying the demon king army alone, Dakai comes and meets with Shulk, the sound slicer, Higware and also Lana. Dakai is really speechless watching Higware and Shulk but he can feel their power. Terran added that she requires an army with a unique ability, Shulk clarifies as a mercenary, until getting the reward in advance working would be a breach of his principles. In meantime Dakai tested the post of Higware which is really impressive. Interestingly Higware is capable of using 42 arms at a time, he also has poison in his sword which can deliberately kill a person, he obeys everyone but can't be ruled by anybody, Higware is a free slave, he is a gladiator a mandrake, he is Higware, the pelagic. On the other side near Reicher Mountain Village Hido met with Kuzi. He has an angel with him, Kuzi went to a bar and met with Ripple, the forest leaf, he also introduced her to Nihilo, the vortical stampede, Nihilo agreed to help Hido in exchange for her release. On the other side Kuzi survived from the Demon King era, he has an angel with him. We know about the Oriasia soldier coming to defeat the Vikian the giant black dragon, they met with kids there. What we know about Kuzi is that he is a responsible man always smiling on his face, it's been like 4 years since he is living here, when Ripple came to meet with him and asked him to cooperate with Lithia. After the 6th general soldiers came people from Lithia came to investigate, they said if those people help them they must support the church, Ripple and Kuzi both are religious people and support it, but Kuzi can't help her in this matter as he is working with Hido from Oriasia, after he denied two people attacked them. 
From his luggage he opened a shield with great power, he asked not to kill them, and then a sprinkle of light, those men are falling down on the floor, what he was carrying with him is an angel but because of her invisible attack, Ripple also died with unfortunate, Nihilo died once before, but she hasn't seen any angel what Kuzi saw. He thinks that angels are alone too, the angel he carried with him has also a great ability, she is undetectable by anyone in this world, nobody can see and feel her without Kuzi, Kuzi is immune to interference by any means and immaterial consciousness. Since the dawn of the world has possessed the absolute authority to end life, but she comes silently and takes everything without any notice, the embodiment of the fate of death, a stabber, and an angel, she is Nastique, the quiet singer. The mage city which is the satellite city closest to the new principality of Lithia which is serving as an outpost for Oriasia to monitor Lithia's movement, Lord Hiddo is the 20th minister of Lithia, he met with Yuno and Sujuru, he started to speak about his enemy Terran who is the former 23rd general of Oriasia. Terran has an army of wyverns and some magic items and mercenaries, as the war gonna happen between Oriasia and the new principality of Lithia, Hiddo seeking help from Yuno and Sujuru but Sujuru comes here for the competition he isn't ready for this war, Hiddo added the competition is a big event before starting it they must win this war. So he said if Yuno and Sujuru help him in this war, one of the 29 officials must support them in the contest, Lord Hiddo also said that on the day when the Nagan city was destroyed, Terran's right hand Dakai was present in the city, he also added that maybe Dakai was behind activating the Golem Labyrinth boss. Hearing this Yuno is heading towards the path of revenge, she along with Sujuru wants to help Hiddo in this war, now back to the Lithia Regnigi met with Dakai in the house Kurt, Dakai started to doubt him and Kurt, but it goes for nothing as Regnigi never gonna betray his city, the swarm of Regnigi was lost by the army of the true demon king. At that time Kurt also lost her sight, after that just in between 4 years Regnigi made a group of swarm again, he trusts his swarm much more than Kurt, as per Dakai Kurt may have leaked information about Lithia, in this situation Dakai can kill Kurt to save his city and also the swarm, Kurt was doing dinner with Taryn. Meanwhile Kurt sometimes calls her mother, in the reply Taryn said she isn't her real mother so she must stop calling her mother, Kurt is serious about Regnigi as she is demanding the safety of Regnigi but he is wyvern he can't do safe work, Taryn accepted that she was a self-proclaimed demon king. So Oriasia never gonna hold back on anybody who takes the title of Demon King. So there must be a war gonna happen but Terran gonna save Lithia at any cost. Terran found Kurt long time ago with Regnigi. Kurt thinks that Regnigi is an angel who saves people though she doesn't know the trust of Regnigi. Terran promised that she never gonna loss in this war. Kia and Elia reached into Lithia. Kia is her exclusive trump card which is gonna be unknown to Oriasia. Meanwhile Elia sent Kia to play and she went to meet with Lana, Lana is only one who knows about the Kia. Lana infiltrates Lithia as a spy for Oriasia and passes in the information about Kia to Elia, at that moment Kia reaches there, so Lana met with her bring to the restaurant, the people of the city admire her most, in every tavern people celebrate like a festival in the time of war with Oriasia. Because these people thinks they will win the war with the help of the Wyvern's army and undefeated Terran, Lana was in a spy guild during the war in the time of the Demon King, Lana wants Kia during this war but Elia doesn't want to let her, as Lana met with Dakai, Dakai informed her that Kurt might leak the information as she working as an informant. But the whole incident on doubting Kurt was just a drama because Lana is the real one behind the leaking of information, as Lana is a spy she uses a secret code by using braille to spread the information, as per Dakai she was transcribing the diary and leaking those transcriptions. After decoding those transcriptions Dakai found these are the exact same information which reached to the spy of Oriasia, she was taken by Dakai, meanwhile Elia in a new tension, if Lana started to talk, Elia gonna be in doubt too, she was in deep trouble as Lana was taken by bandits, it's Elia's chance to save Lana or kill her using Kia without any trace. Now in Oriasia's outskirts territory mage city, Yuno is along with the soldier heading towards to Lithia, Currently the situation with Lithia is volatile so they requested these patrols, Lithia asserts that Oriasia must make efforts to maintain public order to stop the frequent outlaw attacks, Oriasia is putting these outlaws on Lithia. A friendly patrol is just a show off from Oriasia to Lithia in fact Lithia knows that their friend can be an enemy at any time, 
Meanwhile Sudru is ready to battle with a worthy component, the head of the patrolling guard said that Oriesha has continued to work hard towards the peace. As Terran the guarded used to be the 23rd general of Oriesha. Now it looks like that, Lithia is a special autonomous region and revoking the title of self-proclaimed demon king. Whole they are busy in talking, Sujuru saw two shadows approaching in front of them. The shadows are none but Higwer and Shulk, Yuno instantly felt the huge powers, the patrolling team are ready for the attack without knowing them, within a flash of seconds Shulk attacked on the patrolling group but his attack was defensed by Sujuru, then we saw an intense fighting sequence between Shulk and Sujuru. They both are powerful swordsmen and capable of challenging each other, but the soldiers aren't aware of the power of Igera, Higuer just finished all the guards with just one blow, his multiple hands are taking down all soldiers with poison, luckily Yuno is alive but Higuer is in front of her kill him down. Shulk and Sujuru is busy in a sword fight, and Yuno is all the to save her own life. In the mage city Hido met with the old man Hargant who is offering him an official support dispatch, the old man also applied to the council for emergency deployment. But the main thing is that person is mess up on a dragon hunting expedition. Hargant want an expert who can deal with the wyverns, Hido is preparing for the wyverns of Terran but he is aware of the star runner. Hearing the name Uhlus the star runner Hido became speechless, Hargant also informed Lithia stole the cold star from the great labyrinth city of Nagan before the star runner could. But Uhlus might not wait to see someone else taking the treasure, so Hargant wishes that Mage City might be attacked along with Lithia, while they discuss about the probability of war, a sudden attack happened on the Mage City, but the Mage City is still in friendly terms with Lithia so this sudden attack is quite surprising. Meantime one guard informs about the defeat of the patrolling team, Hido became speechless after hearing that Sujuru and Yuno were also not found, cues the passing disaster that's what the backup plan of Hido, soon the wyvern army also attacked on the mage city, the people of the city are also in deep trouble. As hunting wyvern is Hargant's job he is taking charge, Hido called at emergency line 7 and connected with vortical stampede, Hido ordered her to annihilate any enemy that posed a threat to the 6th general and shooting down every lithian wyvern whatever she saw. As Hido getting no information about the Sujuru, it's now Nihilo's responsibility to handle this matter. In this horrible situation of Q's failing to do this assassination job and Nihilo must do it. But Nihilo has a request that she need reward of equal rights with the Minion races and official citizenship of Oriasia. The army general is afraid to using Nihilo, denoting her as a monster who single-handedly destroyed a regional Oriasia army, later we saw that Nihilo ordered some men to open a door, after opening a giant door we saw a spider, Nihilo named it as Tarantula, Nihilo opened her dress and connected herself to that giant spider. A sudden attack from Lithia destroys all plans destroyed, so he ordered Nihilo to take care of things, the power of Nihilo is a complete destruction. The few hours before bombardment we see Yuno was taken by Lithia, she also met with Dakai, Dakai said that Mandrik known as Higwer can't ride a horse. Dakai said he had a very important guest so he left, seeing Dakai Yuno remembered the words of Hido, Hido told her about Dakai a swordsman who carries a blue enchanted sword with him, Yuno understands he is behind Nagan's golem awakening as per the words of Hidwa. Dakai said the scholar wanted to explore the labyrinth so they wanted to solve the great labyrinth in the first place, which means the city must be destroyed sooner or later, she also stated about their conspiracy to start the war, Dakai said it's not in his hands as people are free to choose if they like war or not. After hearing the words of Dakai, Yuno started thinking that everyone is the same, Dakai and Sujuru all are strong people and they don't even think of those who get trampled on, Yuno said she must take revenge but she knows that she is so weak that can't fight with him, Dakai said that he will set her free soon. Higwer, Shulk, Terran, Regnaji everyone sit together to discuss about the war, Shulk admitted to the power of Sujuru, Meanwhile Terran said after the true demon king died the most important thing to rule over the world is fear, she wants to rule the people by fear, she will start the war as soon as possible. The light of the cold star shall serve to illuminate her will to crush any opposition, whoever wants to her opponent she will kill that person, Higwer Shulk is ready to serve her and others too, she ordered Regnaji to eliminate any obstacles and take down the mage city. She added more to cut off their supply lines and isolate them and show them the terror or the wyverns first, Regnaji went to do his job, 
Mage City After the bombardment the people of city is in a very bad situation, the Wyvern army badly destroyed the city, right then, Hargan takes the charge, he understood that stone dropping is the mode of their attack. He understood that their enemy possessed the intelligence to use ground tactics, multiple enemies dropped stones and attacked the city, the new principality of Lithia has broken the treaty, so the war must be started, right then a stone fell on his leg and he fell down. Then we saw a bunch of wyverns is ready to attack him when they came close to kill him, he saw something miracle, a magic bullet killed down those bunch of wyverns, the wyverns who are flying in the sky are destroyed within a flash of seconds, it's Uhlus the star runner, only he can able to beat the wyverns. On the other side the people of Mage City also rise up to take revenge, Uhlus killed all the wyverns and went to search Regnigi, right that moment Nihilo also joined in this battle, she was doing the ground attack, that's how Mage City defended from Lithia's attack, at the time of the bombardment we saw Elia with Kia searching for Lana. Kia used words art to find Lana but Elia alerted her not to use power to attract more enemies, the power of Kia is so powerful that she can make everyone fall asleep from a distance, after a lot of try they finally found Lana, Lana finally understands that Kia is that world word, but they have more problems in front of them. In the prison while they are trying to help Lana escape they encounter with Higware, Lana after knowing that Kia is no one but world word herself, told it to Higware so that she can move from the target of Terran, Lana also understood that Elia is come here to kill her, Higware doesn't want to talk more he just attacked on Kia. But Kia just stopped his sword attacks by speaking one word, Higware understood that he can't able to defeat her, Kia said one sentence, protect them from anything dangerous, and looks like Higware destroyed himself alone, the powerful Mandrake died within few seconds, later they went to find Lana, so it's not Kia who killed Higware. It's something more powerful, Higware chooses to use poisonous gas which is Gus attack method that affects everyone present in that time, this enabled Nautik the quiet singer the wielder of a lethal blade, to thrust death's fong into Higware, Hughes was standing there and anybody who tried to kill him will definitely die. Finally we see Sujuru standing in front of Lithia, he saw the guards at the gate of Lithia and looked like it's gonna be really tough for Oriasia to take down this guard, but Sujuru comes alone and asks them to move, the guards aim fire on him but he masters the use of swords, so he smashed all the bullets by using his sword. After the Nihilo the robotic spider also joined him in this battle, Nihilo is maniacally powerful, she killed all the guards within a second, Sujuru is unable to understand what's going on because he doesn't know that Nihilo is on his side. Nihilo knows him and says she is his ally. Sujuru sound Nihilo is too powerful. So knowing that she is on his side he still challenges her. Nihilo understood that it was not safe to fight with him so she went away and attacked Lithia. After she went in she noticed her spider body had some defects. She is curious because an ogre's axe or a dragon's breath also unable to destroy Helnadin's armor but Sujuru's sword did. Nihilo can adapt to the immense weight and speed of a steed that devastates the terrain. She is a cataphract, a revenant, she is Nihilo the vortical stampede. Later we see Regnaji giving strategy to his swarm. He said about Aluza's great attack which is Hilensingen's the luminous blade. It fires out a blade of light at the moment of drawing, he also added that Aluza's special attack can be extended up to 4 meters so a direct hit can literally kill them. Uhlus has another enchanted sword known as Trembling Bird which is a sword that flies around on its own and also a powerful enchanted one. So Uhlus had a long range attack and Regnaji told them to not go within 12 meters, later we see a fight between Uhlus and Regnaji, whenever Uhlus tried to attack on Regnaji he failed. On the other side Regnaji is so powerful and almost hurt Aluza's wing. Uhlus is in bad condition because the swarms are attacking tactically. Uhlus also got fire attacks from the grounds as the Lithian soldiers were brave enough, he was shot by a soldier and fell down. But Regnaji thinks that he isn't defeated in fact he must be finding a way to leave from this place. So he ordered everyone to find and capture Uhlus. His fear comes true because Uhlus have a great shield of the dead. When all wyverns go to capture him they forget that he reached into Aluza's radius, so he killed down all the wyverns and also killed the soldiers too, Regnaji used his word arts and took the help of the beetles, a group of beetles comes out and surrounds Uhlus so that he becomes so confused, they are so small so that he can't cut them off. The beetles attacked him and ate through his palate and nostrils and ravaged the part of the brain that controls him, 
Uhlus is now in very bad condition, his speed is defeated in front of Regniji, so he was badly hurt and his sword fell. But Uhlus is also one step further he fired up the high tower. So at the end of Busted and all the wyverns along with Regniji got defeated too, the fire also killed down those beetles too, Uhlus have that shield which protects him from the fire, the rest are dead.